when we launched the program in April, the grid capacity in the northern and the western and eastern Cape that was available was in the region of 5.1 gigawatt. Um, the program was closed on the 3rd of October, and then as part of the evaluation process, we do engage ESCOM to determine how much capacity is available uh, on the grid. And um, uh, unfortunately, by the time we started this engagement, uh, the indication from ESCOM was that the, that capacity that was available in March uh, has already been um, allocated or reserved for um, projects that are planning to um, develop for the private sector. So that capacity was not available, and as a result, uh, the 4,110 megawatts that we had uh, under bid window six for wind could not be allocated. It did not only affect wind, it also affected some of the PV projects in those locations. We also had about 2,200 megawatts of PV projects in the Cape area as well that could not be allocated. That is the reason you saw um, in the list of preferred bidders, those projects are situated um, in the Free State and Northwest um, areas. So in summary, in terms of the appointed um, uh, preferred bidders for solar in bid window six, uh, the minimum price is uh, 46.95 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, the maximum price is sitting at about um, 54.8 um, uh, cents per kilowatt hour. Um, the weighted average price is 49.05 cents per kilowatt hour. If you recall back in uh, uh, last year when we announced um, bid window five, the average price for solar was sitting at about, 40, about 42 cents per kilowatt hour and then inflated price in today's terms, it's about 45 cents. So that for the first time since the inception of the program, uh, indicates the changes in the um, economic environment that we find ourselves in. So for the first time, we have seen an 8% increase um, in price from the previous bid window to bid window six. Um, total invested uh, investment in this uh, bid window six, it's estimated at 12.1 billion rand. For the last number of years, we've been producing what is called the grid connection capacity assessment which basically is a, a report that is publicly available and that indicates how much capacity is available to connect at various nodes on the grid. Uh, and this is updated uh, annually with a forward view, uh, taking into account what has been committed already. Um, so that is the one part and we publish this in order to help guide uh, potential developers to focus on where capacity is available the quickest. Uh, obviously with time and sufficient uh, resources we can make even more capacity available uh, but that is probably uh, the second part of, of the uh, opportunity that we need to, to work on. One of the issues that is uh, characteristic of our sector is that it is also regulated particularly uh, transmission and distribution through the grid code and one of the principles that the grid code outlines is that we are required to provide uh, open and non-discriminatory access to the grid um, so we cannot for example say because ESCOM has ambitions to build renewables that we will prioritize ESCOM uh, at the expense of for example this program or the private sector. Uh, one of the key changes in the last part, uh, the last year, is probably uh, the facilitation of more private self-supply options. Uh, I think we spoke previously about the 100 megawatts uh, that was uh, uh, cap that has since been lifted. And unfortunately, um, I guess this is maybe an unintended consequence. Uh, 
a lot of the private builders or developers for self-supply have been more aggressive uh, in making commitments. So not just expressing an interest, which a CEL basically is, is to say we are interested, but it is not a commitment. Uh, and, and that, I think, is the mismatch that we need to look at how we address uh, to say how do we ensure the coexistence of this program uh, alongside other private initiatives uh, that uh, in the case we are discussing now has in fact gone beyond uh, the CEL to in fact uh, making budget quotations and paying what is required and making that co financial commitment to then say we are going to develop. So we need to work through that matter uh, between ourselves uh, DMRE, IPP office, and probably NASA and, in fact, the industry, uh, because this is something that is a rule that applies to us to say whoever applies, you must give them and not hold them back. Uh, so we have to relook either the queuing rules or some of the grid code provisions, but that's work that we need to now do uh, to ensure that there's some equitable way of handling uh, this uh, conflicting requirements for what is at the moment, a scarce resource.